Hello everyone, my name is Jairaj and welcome to another video on a general discussion about REST APIs. So till now we have seen an introduction and a little bit about web services, web APIs and REST APIs and we know that REST is an architectural style. So to get better understanding of that in this tutorial we will discuss about different architectural styles and differences between them. And uh, before jumping to our tutorial hit that red subscribe button to support this channel and let's get started. So there are three web architectural styles basically, uh, service oriented architecture, object oriented architecture and a resource oriented architecture. So uh, first let's start with the service oriented architecture or SOA. So SOA or SOA means as name suggests, it is an architecture oriented at the service. To understand this we need to understand service first and uh, we have already discussed service in last tutorial but let me refresh it again. So service is a software or piece of code that performs a specific task or response to particular event as per request and produce some specific output. In other words, it is a logical representation of repeatable business activities that have specified output. So for example, we can take a weather predictor or accessing a stock price of a given stock. So SOA is a web architectural style of web services, but it is not any programming language or a technology but it defines best approaches to design and develop a web service. Or in other words, it is a set of principles, procedures and the methodologies to develop the application. So to understand this, let's imagine whole uh, system is made up of uh, services and uh, those services perform some operations and also they can communicate with each other. And uh, this system can interact with other application by interfaces. So internally service can consist of many different parts such as getting data from database or calling external system and provide some inputs and retrieving some information from that systems and do some processing on the uh, inputs and applying some algorithms. But consumer of SOA doesn't know internally what is happening, how it produces the output. For consumer SOA is a black box, he doesn't know anything about what, whatever is happening inside. And additional interaction with SOA is stateless, meaning a server doesn't store any information related to client state. And client is responsible to pass information necessary for communication. So because of this stateless nature, it is highly scalable. And additionally, each service in SOA have interface description such as WSDL file, which defines the message and payload formats and everything. So SOAP over HTTP and SOAP over JMS is the example for SOA and here SOAP or SOAP is a protocol and we will discuss about this SOAP in upcoming tutorials. So moving ahead we have object oriented architecture and uh, we don't need to discuss this one for this course but few lines will help you to understand other things. So object oriented architecture is again as name suggests it is architecture oriented at the object. So it involves communication with object instance and uh, mainly it is for managing the life cycle of the object. So for example creating and uh, removing the object. In this case communications are stateful meaning server stores all the information about the state and this communication will be talking to particular object instance that was previously created. So logically object access requires close call or round trip for communication at the server means multiple network calls and that's why this uh, method is not efficient but design patterns offer a solution for this with uh, retrieving bulk data to reduce the network call. So moving ahead we have third architecture style which is resource oriented architecture and here resource oriented architecture or ROA is a foundation of the semantic web or web 3.0 and we have discussed about this web 3.0 in a first tutorial if you haven't watched that please watch it and I'll put the link into the description and the resource oriented architecture is an architecture oriented around the resource so now question is what is this resource right so in simple terms resource is anything that can be stored in computer so in this case we can consider a record in the database a file a document or a result of algorithms as a resource for example retrieving html page with a get request or retrieving the database table so idea of roa is to use basic well understood and well known web technologies such as http uri and xml and json with the core design principles and providing guidelines to support and implement interaction of the resources. So let's understand few properties and concepts of the ROA. 
and the first one is the resource provider so uh, someone is to provide these resources right and we call those providers a resource providers and uh, in our example we can consider aws uh, amazon web service and uh, microsoft azure as a resource second one is the resource we already discussed about this and uh, as an example we can take any server device a web page any script a file or a document any data and these resources will have name and a unique address or a path to it Another thing we have is a resource representation. So resource representation is the useful information about the current state of the resource and uh, which will be specified in a specific format or a specific language. So for example, let's say we have a transcript of the speech and we can consider it as a record and uh, we have multiple languages about it. So based on the request, we can serve the language of that particular transcript. And the next one is the resource link and the connectedness. So this resource link represents the another resource or resource itself. And connectedness is uh, about the reliability and the relevant uh, to the resource. So for example, it is like one resource is connected with another resource of same kind. So for example, when we watch videos on YouTube, it suggests uh, other videos of same kind. So that is a resource link and the connectedness. So next one we have is statelessness and uh, statelessness meaning is the server won't store any client state related information and uh, every request should be self-contained and independent. So meaning of that is client is responsible for providing necessary information at the time of request. Server won't remember anything about the client. Next one we have is the uniform interface and the uniform interface means all services should happen same way such as get, post, put and delete and which will be interpreted same way across the internet. So these are some basic properties of ROA which brings some benefits such as uh, scalability and performance. So because of features like statelessness and uh, no session stickiness, it is possible to achieve good performance and scalability. Second benefit we have is explicit state. So meaning of this is client and server will have explicit state and the client doesn't need to keep track of a server and server doesn't need to keep track of client. Every request will be independent of each other. And another benefit is no contract. So ROA follows the HTTP protocols and entire web works with HTTP. So no need to establish any new contracts and connections between client and server. So these are the three main web architectures and you guys will be heard two among these three very often, the SOA and the ROA. And mainly SOA can use SOAP and REST both and ROA uses REST. So REST is not a protocol, it is a guideline that falls under ROA. And we will discuss about these differences between them in upcoming tutorial. And uh, that's all for now in this tutorial. And uh, don't forget to like and share because our goal here is to provide knowledge to as many people as possible. And uh, put your comments, questions and suggestions into comment box. And uh, see you in next tutorial. Till then, like, share, subscribe and keep learning. Thank you very much.